So we look at capability as a, as a system, uh, and a system that's there to try and help people, teams, functions, organisations figure out how to work together as seamlessly as they can to deliver the impact that they want. And we think there are six building blocks to that system. The first is about really understanding the bigger challenges and opportunities. And within that, it's obviously essential that you understand where the organisation is trying to go, the vision, the strategy, what are you trying to achieve in the long term? The second element to that is then, what are the commercial beliefs? Are you very Byron Sharp? Are you Bennett and Field? Where, where do you think growth comes from? What drives growth? And against that, you need to diagnose holistically what are the priorities, what are the capability priorities we've got? And that sets you up very nicely then to design the right kind of programme. The second element is a simple future-backed commercial framework that makes sense of the day job that teams have got to do together. Within that sits a relatively stable growth platform um, that outlines how the brand is going to grow, the brand foundation, so we're clear about our long-term assets that we're going to pull on. Then you need clarity around the brand experience uh, that you're looking to create. And again, using the sort of the Bennett and Field approach, thinking about that as kind of the 60%. So again, relatively stable in terms of uh, the, the experience you're trying to create. But around that, you need an activation engine. Uh, clearly, that's far more dynamic, and that's where the 40% sits. So sort of three fundamental elements that we see to a, to a commercial framework, underpinned ideally by balanced metrics, so that everybody's looking at the same data, you're looking at it through the lens of the 60-40, so you're getting that short-term results, but balanced by the, by the long-term uh, perspective. The third element is then making sure that there are really clear and flexible ways of working with the right people. The teams need to really understand what their role is in driving great output, what great looks like in the first place, and the outcomes that they're trying to get to. You need the right diverse mix of people uh, and voices uh, to, uh, to, to, to get to the right outcomes. And then clearly the teams have got to be able to perform as a team. The fourth element is then the providing in-the-flow work support. Um, and most fundamental to that is making sure they've got always on resources so that when they are in the job and they're looking for the help and, and guidance, they can access that on any device, any time that they, they need, the kind, of a, the kind of guidance they're looking for. We're then big believers in strategic live action, uh, which means rolling, you know, rolling sleeves up and actually helping teams live to crack real problems. Quite often that starts with three-year growth planning, helping, for example, global local teams to build their, their growth plans. You can then, after that, do the topic deep dives once people understand the end-to-end -end, uh, framework. And clearly then there's a role for coaching uh, for teams and individuals to perform at the level that they, uh, that, that they need to. The fifth element is then the importance of being able to learn and adapt fast. And Codifying best growth practice is often the lowest hanging fruit here, so that if you're on a brand in a specific market context, in a certain stage of its growth cycle, what are the growth levers that you can pull? And having those codified is a really, really helpful way of accelerating growth so that you're not reinventing the wheel across markets. Making sure then you've got outside in curated content so that you are challenging the status quo inside the organisation and stretching people's thinking. We know organisations that do great jobs on kind of the 70-20-10 approach to test and learning, where 70% is obviously on what's proven to work and the 10% is might work, might not, but let's try. And then awards are a great way of, of, of recognising those that are pushing growth, uh, are pushing at great, and, and also really keeping the bar high in terms of what great looks like. And the last thing is... With those five building blocks in place, the last building block is then having the right learning ecosystem to make sure that this stuff all just works. Now, a competency framework can be very useful uh, in that, tied into the commercial framework. Having an internal network that the central function can tap into so that you're not a lonely two, three people sitting globally, you're tapped into a network. You need governance of the framework that you create and somebody looking after air traffic control. It's very common in global setups that you've got SMEs creating their own programs and stuff and quite often there's just too much for teams to be able to digest. So somebody needs to oversee what's getting delivered, how it's getting delivered and the fact it all ties back to your master uh, framework. 
You need a learning platform, at the very least, that allows people to access the resources, ideally allows you to develop personalised learning, uh, learning pathways, track and measure stuff so you can see what's working and adapt in real time. Most fundamentally of all of this is probably leaders walking the talk, um, because if they're not doing that, you can spend lots of time on the rest of it and you're not going to get the traction and impact that you really, you really need. And you need the right partners. Uh, in this day and age, it's, 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 there's no way that uh, you know, one person, two people are going to be able to do all this on their own. You need the right set of partners in order to be able to, to make this work. So that's the system that we see. Six fundamental building blocks, all interdependent. It's not to say you need all of them, but you need to be conscious about the right mix for your context.